And welcome back. This is your man, Warrior. This is going to be a kill order video on how to take out the Night Sisters. Now, a lot of you may be saying why the Night Sisters are not meta. I'm not sure why we would need this. Well, if you think they're not meta, then you're sorely mistaken. They are, in fact, growing on the meta board. They're going to very soon be higher on the meta board. And when we look through my leaderboard, we're going to notice that it looks like the usual suspects, CLS and Rex. But what you will notice once we get a little further down is we start running into Night Sisters. And the thing with Night Sisters is they can climb. And I'm sure a lot of you have seen Cubs Von Han's video where they use the Acolyte and the tank and they're basically invincible uh, if there's no AoE debuff like Bays um, with Chirrut. So without a Bays, you can basically go through and, and just decimate pretty much every other team. And so with that comes a lot of people who have gone kind of all in on uh, the Night Sisters and are using it to climb. Now, this is not a shaming video. If you've decided to go the Night Sister route and use that Acolyte and Zombie technique where the Acolyte goes stealth and the Zombie just keeps coming back to life and you can just slowly take out an opposing team, specifically CLS meta-led teams, then good for you. That was a strategy and your strategy is paying off. But you will notice those teams fall hard on leaderboards they don't stay at the top most of the time unless they're built really well but i wanted to talk about the kill order because they are becoming more and more apparent they're popping up and creeping up more and more on many more leaderboards and i'm starting to get messages on an almost daily basis about how to take out these teams so the teams will vary on what you're facing but the one thing that's constant is more than likely you're going to have the acolyte and the zombie in the back now uh, awoken this guy awoken who built this team uh, made a fatal flaw in his team and that is that he has geared his zombie too high i actually did the same thing you know just going in gearing him up you think okay and you really want the zombie to be a one hit wonder when they're hit once by han solo they die or if they are hit once by cls they die you don't want them to be able to be fractured or ability buffed so I'm giving you a little bit of strategy if you're going to run them. You want them when they're hit to die because then the, the zombie comes back to life and can almost immediately start tanking again and forcing your attention to it. So the fa first fatal flaw is you can fracture this tank. I can actually fracture his tank. And that would be a suggestion if you guys are going against it is to fracture the tank, leave rendering it useless. And then it allows for you to kill order the rest of the characters. If you don't have Thrawn to Fracture, use anybody who does buff immunity. A lot of people use the TIE Fighter Pilot because you can apply buff immunity and ability block even with that character. So you're going to want to either have buff immunity over the zombie's head or Fracture with Fracture being the most logical choice if you have access to Thrawn. Then after that, the next fatal flaw most people do when fighting this team is they try to kill old Daka and then Mother Talzin or vice versa, Mother Talzin and then old Daka, because those two bring people back to life. Mother Talzin can do it with her AOE and old Daka can do it with a couple of her abilities. And so what happens is you're constantly having these guys pop back up. And so while the tanks fractured, a lot of people are focused on those two. I'm going to tell you the very first person you should focus on especially if you're running Raid Han. Now, not everybody has Raid Han, but if you have Raid Han, you should use him in this way. Hit the Acolyte first. Not only will it more than likely kill the Acolyte, but if it doesn't, it will remove all of the Acolyte's protection. This is key because if, in fact, you screw up in some way or the team's just really good and it gets to the point where it comes down to the tank and the Acolyte stealth, you will have to be able to do AoEs of some sort or manual debuffs to the Acolyte while in stealth. For example, R2-D2 has burn. If you use R2-D2, and many people do, even if the Acolyte is stealth, you can continue to target with the burn every few turns, and it will eventually kill the Acolyte because it's a 15%. It's really good. So you want to make sure there's no protection there because if there's protection, the burn won't be enough and you won't be able to get through. Same thing with uh, the debuffs that uh, Darth Vader can do or other characters can do. You're not going to be able to get enough damage to take out all the protection and health. So target the Acolyte first, killing the Acolyte. 
Now, what you're going to say is, well, Warrior, if I kill the Acolyte, this tank is going to keep taunting, and I, I'm going to have Mother Talzin or Oldaka bring the tank back, or bring the Acolyte back to life. And that is probably true, but he, she comes back to health with full health. She never regenerates the protection. Again, you're going to need to make sure, worst case scenario, that you have the Acolyte down to health only. Then you're going to focus on old Daka because she has a couple of ways of bringing things back to life and she can heal everybody and if they've built her right she's going to be healing quite a bit so you are going to want to take out old Daka then after taking out old Daka you're going to want to take out mother Talzin after you take out mother Talzin you can then go to Asajj and then to the tank hopefully you've killed the acolyte first then old Daka if the acolyte comes back to life target her immediately killing her off again keep killing her off so that way she does not get the opportunity to go stealth worst case scenario she comes back to life and gains stealth then you're going to go for old daka mother talzin asajj ventress and then you're just going to try to use aoe debuffs such as darth vader's damage over times or r2d2's burn to slowly over the next two or three minutes kill off the acolyte now if you kill the acolyte and fracture the tank what's going to happen is you're going to be able to kill this team in 30 to 30 seconds to a minute it's really really fast the battle will be and this is actually a very easy team to beat once you know the kill order that i just explained if you are going to run this team for yourself make sure your tank is only around 10 to 15 thousand health and protection total it does make this team overpowered as hell and really really difficult to beat also Asajj Ventress as the lead is a far better leader because of what she provides in the leadership role than Mother Talzin. But for all of you that are starting to face these in arena and are wondering how do I overcome it, I hope this strategy works. I am going to show you some video of me actually using my strategy and killing a team in less than 60 seconds. Check this out. bonus content this is for anybody who actually watches my videos and stays until the end this is a reward for you a uh, bit of an easter egg i'm going to plant at the end of this video so this team right here i just wanted to give a shout out to maraxis from team instinct this is a build that he has and this is in my opinion the singular best defensive team in the game hands down we went against in this last territory war against bhg reloaded they are the second largest guild in the world at over 164 million gp now i have some friends in there and i don't want to talk bad however their strategy was we can't beat them so let's make a tie so unfortunately their strategy was to put crap characters into defense, which they did, and then put uh, all the best characters they had into their offense. And we did like we always did, which is we tried to do the best offense we could and the best defense that we could because we're trying to play the game as intended. So we beat their team in less than 30 minutes and they then used the next 12 hours to uh, attempt to beat our teams. It came down to this team, this one team, Maraxis's 
Night Sister team with an Asajj Ventress lead and a squishy zombie. This team proceeded for an hour and a half to pummel over 60 teams. We watched eating popcorn, of course, for over an hour and a half. I stopped keeping track after this team continued to beat over 60 teams. I just said, my God, this is the best defensive team. And so I figured I would pop this out into this so you could see that this is what we saw for an hour and a half. And it was sure pleasure to watch them continually bash their head against this absolutely amazing team again it was like the okay corral he was able to fend off well in excess of 60 amazing offensive teams until it finally fell but this is hands down the number one best defensive team this is your easter egg thanks for watching as always keep your gaming on warrior out